All right, my friends, welcome back to part two of this tutorial on how to paint up 135 scale US paratroopers. If you missed part one, be sure to pop over there first to learn how to build up your figure and prep him for painting, as well as all the steps that go into painting our head. We're gonna dive right into our uniform to kick things off, and we're gonna start blocking in the main color of our troopers jump uniform in Vallejo khaki. Don't worry about overpainting any of the little details right now, we just need to make sure we get good coverage on all the main parts of the body here. Once that's done, we're going to break out some green-gray to paint in the reinforced patches on his knees and elbows. As mentioned in part 1, this is a great little figure from Alpine Miniatures. They make some of the best resin figures on the market today, which definitely makes painting things a little easier. Once those patches are done, we're going to grab some German camo beige to start work on his belt and webbing. We're going to approach our figure working from the inside out, focusing on the deepest areas of the sculpt first, those closest to the body, and working out to the hands, boots, and accessories. This helps us minimize mess and hopefully avoids the need to repaint any of our hard work. I had a large coffee while painting this guy and the caffeine jitters are really starting to kick in here, so sorry about that. With that stage complete, let's grab some tan earth and start to paint up our guy's map case. This tan earth will also be a great color for our entrenching tool case, so let's paint that up while we're at it. With those done, let's switch back to our camo beige and paint up the case for his canteen real quick. Next we're going to paint up our hands. We're going to use the same technique we used for our face in part 1 with Vallejo medium flesh followed by basic skin tone. So again, if you haven't seen part 1 yet, be sure to hop over and check that out as well. I realized here that I forgot to paint up the strap to our binoculars, so we're going to very carefully paint in that tiny line with some red leather. If at any point you do make a mistake, you can always revisit a color and just paint over your error, no biggie at all. Now we're going to paint in both the binoculars and the metal components of his carbine with flat black. I forgot to film the wood portion of his weapon, but that's going to be Vallejo Beige Brown as well.
Our carbine strap can be colored in using the same red leather we used for the binocular straps. And the handle of the entrenching tool will be the beige brown we just used on our carbine. These paratrooper figures have some leg bands on their uniforms, so we're going to paint those in using the same green-gray we used for the reinforced patches on his knees and elbows. And his sidearm holster and boots can also be finished with that lovely red leather color we've been using. Alright, next we're going to move on to that iconic Screaming Eagles 101st Airborne patch. Alpine does have this molded into his left arm here, which gives us a nice guide, so we'll start with a base of flat black for the body of the patch itself. Once that's on, we can refine the shape using our uniform khaki to clean things up a bit. We'll use some ammo cremavice for the eagle itself and kind of block him in there. This is very small, so don't worry about going too crazy with the details. Next, we're going to take a tiny dot of the medium flesh we used for our skin and add a beak to our eagle. We'll also draw in a line above the patch where that airborne text would be. Not too bad for 135 scale, huh? I love little details like this, and they add so much to a figure. Alright, to wrap up our painting, we're going to accentuate all the straps, snaps, and buckles on our trooper's uniform with some Vallejo white aluminum. Now, before you tell me, Hank, those parts wouldn't have been shiny. I know. But trust me, at this scale, it really helps to make those tiny details pop a little bit. Once everything's weathered and varnished, it'll all make sense. Trust the process, my friends. Alrighty, so with our figure fully painted up, we're going to spray everything with a gloss coat of AK Interactive Gauzy Agent, hence the shine you see here. This is going to protect our paint against the enamel weathering products that we're about to use. We're going to do a simple wash here using Ammo Dark Wash to help create a bit of artificial shadow and accentuate all the beautiful sculpted detail of this figure. Nothing fancy here, just brush on some of the wash and let it flow into all the nooks and crannies of our figure. It's going to look a little messy at first, but don't worry, we're going to remove a lot of this. It's all good. We're going to do the same thing to our head that we painted up in part one, but it's a good idea to go a little lighter on the wash on the skin itself. Once all of our wash is applied, we're going to take some odorless enamel thinner and remove some of the excess wash that we don't want. Now the goal here is to leave the wash in the deepest folds of his clothes and in the recesses of his equipment, and we want to remove the wash from flat surfaces and raised areas. Try to envision how light would be hitting these areas. If it's deep, there's a shadow, and if it's raised, it's in the light. The nice thing about enamel products is that you can work with them for a while, so take your time here and play with the effect until you're happy with it, then step away and let the product dry completely before we move on to the next step. Once our enamel products have dried completely, we're going to want to spray our figure with a coat of matte varnish. 
I'm using Ammo's Lucky Matte Varnish here, and that's going to protect our weathering layer and knock down that unnatural shine that we don't want on our finished product. To finish up here, we're going to carefully pop our head off the mounting screw. Wear a pair of gloves here as the natural oils in your skin can damage the varnish coats. We can use our spruce nippers to carefully cut the head from the pouring block. Be sure to follow along the correct angle here so you don't damage his neck in the process. Any excess material can be cleaned up with a sharp hobby knife. Next, we can attach our head using a little bit of super glue. It's a good idea to do a test fit first to make sure you don't have to make any additional changes to the neck shape before you actually apply the super glue. Once our head is on there, all that's left to do is remove our figure from the mounting screw and clean up the pouring blocks on his feet. This can be done using the same method we just used for his head. And once our figure is free, we just need to make sure he can stand up on his own. And that is it, my friends. If you'd like to check out some of my other figure painting tutorials, I will put a link to them right here. And until next time, be well, happy building, cheers.